There's the main entrance now. Is there a price that we can? This is where you get your tickets. Hey everybody, Tom here for Tom's Road Trip and I am visiting Sunken Gardens in St. Petersburg, Florida today. It is a beautiful day. This is a fantastic old Florida attraction. It's been here for a very, very long time. I came here as a little kid multiple times. The entrance area has all changed. It used to have the uh, self-proclaimed world's largest gift shop in a really cool uh, biblical themed area that had all sorts of um, statues and it really, really cool if I remember as a kid. They do have some animals here, mainly flamingos. I do love flamingos. I'm going to show you all the different areas. They gave me a paper map at the entrance. There's some additional information I will share with you along the way. How it got its name, Sunken Gardens, and just overall view of the place. Very, very beautiful area. Excited to be here. Let's get started. Oh, I definitely like this. Always enjoy all the fountains and the waterfalls. So this is the official map. They give you a paper map at the entrance. Entrance is number one. We are at number two, which is the Fountain Plaza. So we're gonna follow the trails around and get to see everything. I'll try to go in order, make things easier so you know exactly where I'm at. So it has information on the map that I was given. The Sunken Garden has been a landmark in St. Petersburg since 1935. In 1923, the four-acre property was purchased by George Turner Sr., a plumber who was an avid gardener. He drained a shallow lake which had filled an ancient sinkhole and dropped 15 feet below street level to provide a rich soil to grow fruits and exotic plants from all over the world. So that's basically how it's got its name, Sunken Gardens, because it's 15 feet below street level. So as we walk along the pathways, it's going to gradually decline to 15 feet. It's the world's largest gift shop, which opened in 1967, and what is now the restored entrance to the gardens. So they used to have a lot of exotic animals here, however a majority of those animals no longer reside on the property. They do still have the flamingos, which were a staple I remember as a kid. As you can see number two, very aptly named the Fountain Plaza. The Sister Cities. So there's just all sorts of beautiful plants and trees. I really enjoy stuff like this. <gasps> Look at what we got. We have our first animal. It's a cute little squirrel. Cute little squirrel. I do like the squirrels. Squirrel. Just tore around on the side, on the ground. But yes, it was just lots of gorgeous plant life. Got some bamboo. Oh, this is nice also. But 
yeah, just just gorgeous plants. And there's signs and everything to let you know exactly what type of plant life you are looking at. There's lots of little areas you can sit and relax. All right, number three is Palm Plaza. And we got a Viclana date palm. I see these really nice looking palms right here. A couple places to sit down and relax. These are cool looking trees right here. And this giant tree. Yeah, all sorts of palm trees. Big tall bamboo. Picnic tables, you can have your lunch. Oh yeah, got some crotons. Nice thing is you got some signage here. Let you know the different areas. Alright, number four is the Oak Pavilion. Yeah, some impressive oak right here. This is nice, all brick paved. Mm. Yeah, Live Oak, February nineteen seventy seven. Yes, there's different types of oak trees. Live oaks being the largest, I believe. They just grow to massive sizes. This is how huge this thing is. All right, number five is exotic birds. Where have we got an umbrella cockatoo? Hi, pretty bird. Hi, pretty bird. I do a little bit of grooming. Clean your feathers, huh? Hi. Done cleaning your feathers, huh? No, no, not done yet. Hi. Hi. Got some more cleaning to do. Got more cleaning to do? You look very nice. Did a good job. He did a good job grooming. He did. Yeah, he looked good. He looked really good. Oh my gosh, you got laughing kookaburra. All right, so I'm gonna see my number one and number two favorite birds here today. I'm excited. Hello, you gorgeous bird. How are you? Hi. I just absolutely love these birds. Hi. And we got macaws. Oh, very pretty birds. Hi, pretty birds. Hi. Oh, yeah, we got the blue and gold macaws in the back. How are you? It's an avian retirement community. Is 
These lucky birds have hit the jackpot. Retiring at Sunken Gardens among friends and experienced keepers that adore them. They have found rest, safety, and love here in this beautiful natural setting. Yeah, so all these birds here are very well taken care of and I'm sure they are pampered a lot. And all by the birds are more beautiful lush plant life and other trees. Continue along this pathway. Right, number six is the 1940 original entrance. And colorful paths tell a story. So, yeah, that's the original entrance right here. So, this is what the different pathways that they were specifying on the signage I just showed you. Things were just added on. Very colorful. So this is the other side, the original entrance. Been all restored. And you go inside the history center, newly opened. It's hard to imagine a time before sunken gardens existed in St. Petersburg. You would have to go back more than a century to see the land as it once was, a sinkhole. In 1911, George Turner Sr. and his wife Eula purchased 4.1 acres of land one mile north of the emerging city center. Due to the sinkhole on site, the land sat 15 feet below street level. But George, a plumber by trade, had an idea. He devised his own terracotta tile system, effectively draining the sinkhole, leaving behind a rich, mucky soil. Perfect conditions for his favorite hobby, gardening. Living a good life with lots of luck in the Florida real estate world, the Turners were doing well. However, after a series of hurricanes and freezes in the area, and the downturn of the real estate business in 1926, the Turners were soon left with just a garden. And to make ends meet, they opened a fruit and vegetable stand. Soon, neighbors began to stroll through George's tropical garden, enjoying an array of plants from around the world. In 1934, Mr. Turner began charging 15 cents to enter his subtropical paradise of royal palms, banana trees, and coffee plants, and more. It's hard to imagine the old sinkhole site would become a natural paradise. For three generations, the Turners ran Sunken Gardens for almost a century, building a world-renowned attraction complete with beauty contests, celebrities, models, flamingos, and other exotic animals.
A lot can happen in a hundred years. Freezes, economic downturns, and a breed of new amusement parks opening close by. So, in 1989, the Turner grandsons put Sunken Gardens up for sale. And 10 years later, the residents of St. Petersburg voted for a one-time tax increase so the city itself could purchase the gardens. This tropical oasis still stands as one of Florida's oldest and last remaining roadside attractions. Thanks to generations of the Turner family's dedication, a community grassroots effort, and a of luck. So this is called a history. The sinkhole becomes tropical paradise. Like it always has pictures of the original entrance, the way it used to look. That's what I remember when I came here as a child. Attraction grows from adversity. Background Garden, the national attraction success despite setbacks.
this picture here at the bottom shows the building that we're in, which was the original entrance. So unfortunately these old Florida attractions back before the major theme parks in Orlando took all of the tourism away from the area were the fixture of the areas. The city of St. Petersburg purchased Second Gardens. So this is the area that I remember Coming here as a little kid, they still had a lot of the animals that they no longer have here. Of course, they still have the birds, but all the little smaller animals, the monkeys, the petting zoo, the goats, no longer exist here. Marketing the magic of sunken gardens. Bananas and papayas. It says timeline of sunken gardens. It's a 1940 small entrance erected. That's the building I'm standing in. 1955, they added the flamingos. 1966, big plans for a big building. That's what the entrance I remember as a kid. All right, number seven is bromelids, and we got orchids. Again, this whole area has just been recently restored. Orchids are not flowering at the moment because we are technically still in winter. So, springtime would be the best time to come to the gardens to see all the blooms. Oh, 
yeah, flamingos. All uh, right, number eight is flamingos. I do love the flamingos. So that's pretty cool. My two favorite types of birds in one spot. Laughing kookaburros that we just saw not that long ago. And the flamingos. First right, so we got Chilean flamingos. Very, very nice. Look at all the plants and the big palm trees. They're all talking now. Continue along. Some other places to sit down and relax, enjoy the sights. Again, this is really nice and tranquil where the water flows all the way around. Got Florida's native plants. Wow, I just absolutely adore this. More tall grasses. Elephant's foot or ponytail palm. See if it got its name because it looks like an elephant's foot. Looks like it's having some issues. All right, number nine is the amphitheater. So we'll have animal presentations here. Primarily during peak season, so summertime, spring break. This is the back portion of the property. I'm actually a little disappointed in myself that I have such a gem uh, right near where I reside in the Tampa Bay area. And this is the first time I've been here probably since uh, the 80s. This place reminds me a lot of uh, Flamingo Gardens in southern Florida that I visited in this time frame of last year. Oh, I love this, all these vines. Oh yeah. Wow. Some nice seating here to just enjoy this. Creates a nice natural cover. Just love this.
more crotons. Got the tortoise habitat. Got red footed tortoise and North American box turtle. Here's one of the tortoises right here. And I see the box turtle on the left. And of uh, the red footed tortoise to the right of them. And this is all these fuzzy flowers growing on it. Oh yeah, that very very tranquil. Can hear the flamingos that are to my left. Oh man, this is nice. All right, number 10 is the koi pond. We got koi or ornamental carp. Wow. These are huge. Wow. Bye fish, have a good day. Alright, gonna continue along the pathway. Oh, it is nice. I like the way they grow. Number 11 is Orchid Arbor. So normally there'd be lots of orchids hanging in the air with all the blooms, but like I said, they are not blooming at the moment. You also see a few remnants of the past. These areas here would have housed some of the smaller animals that they used to have here, like goats. They also had little uh, marmoset type monkeys. So these areas are no longer used for to house animals. Though when I was here as a kid, they still had some of the animals here. Anyway, we continue going along. This big palm tree here is called a Bismarck palm. That's a nice looking tree. A little further along the pathway. Also, again, used to, used to house animals. 
they might have uh, birds here sometimes. But since it's a weekday in January, this is definitely not peak season. So I mentioned the crotons, a crotons. I have these growing in my yard, and these are a very popular plant to see in the state of Florida for landscaping. But you can see this how large they can get if they're not trimmed back. There's many different varieties of uh, crotons. There's a different variety here. It's a Chinese fan palm. See they got their name because it looks like they got fans, which is their their main part of the plant growing. These are very popular throughout the state of Florida. These type of plants also are very popular in the state of Florida because they're very hardy. It's called a pygmy date palm. Now this tree is really cool. The bark on the outside of it has some rainbow colors. Just notice that walking by. Number 12 is the Growing Stone. And you see it right here. All right, so I'm sitting on top of the Growing Stone. So I have plants and stuff at home. New stuff I'll be doing for spring, so hopefully everything grows well. Since I'm following the, the legend here of sitting on the Growing Stone. All right, so 13 is low pond. This is the lowest pond on the property. Another very lovely little mini waterfall into the water. But yeah, we are 15 feet below street level right now. And this is nice also. Another live oak. All right, 14 is waterfall. Yes, sir. It's definitely water and it's falling. This is all uh, faux rocks that were constructed back in the early days of the gardens. Again, this would have housed some type of animal back in the earlier days so following the colorful pathways this is called a ponytail palm Do not see many of these. This large palm here is called a Majesty Palm.
Got quite a few of those growing here. Fifteen is the photo ring. Get yourself a nice photo op right here. All right, sixteen is the wedding one. And weddings are held here routinely. Is it real or is it? See all the pretty flowers that they plant. A nice bridge. I'm sure, lots of photographs are taken here. This is a secondary koi area or koi pond. These are much smaller koi than the ones we saw earlier. All right, well, they're all swimming over to me, so this must be where they are fed from. Yeah, they're all congregating over here. Sadly, I do not have any food for them. They do not have feeders here. A lot of places I go to, they have koi, they have those little coin-operated vending machines. They get handfuls of fish food but they do not have it here sorry fish all right so we're going to continue along this is another variety of croton here right here this type of plant is all over the place in landscaping We got Cuban royal palm. That's these giant palm trees right here. Wow, these guys are huge. Wow. And unfortunately, I see a lot of idiots have uh, carved their names. Don't do stuff like this. This is a living free right here. Nobody wants to see your stupid name graffitied, howl, you know, carved out. It's extremely ignorant thing to do. All right, 17 is Coconut Grove. This is a clumping fishtail palm. So of course, the most well-known species of palm tree you see in the state of Florida is the coconut palm. That's these all right here. Now South Florida, down in Miami and the Keys, the coconut palms there actually grow coconuts. The climate here is not suitable enough to grow coconuts. This tree is called a dragon tree. Number 18 is the arched bridge. It's the bridge that we walked over right by all of the koi. Now, evidently, I'm incorrect because you can purchase uh, fish food. You can. I just went and got some. Gift shop? Gift shop. Oh, okay. Two bucks. Oh, okay. You can buy fish food for two dollars at the gift shop. Didn't even notice that. Guess that's why all the fish were congregating by me. You were looking for some food. Like 
feed me. Alright, number 19 is the meditation patio. It's called Ghost Bamboo. Doesn't seem very spooky to me. Maybe at night, I don't know. But yeah, there's area here you can meditate or just enjoy the surroundings sitting on one of these benches. And this is aptly named Giant Bamboo. That's how wide the stalks are. Wow. The giant is right. So lots of nice seating over here. This really, really cool looking. It's called a Traveler's or Traveler Palm. When they look like they got banana leaves, just the way they grow. It's so cool the way it grows together. All right, so we're gonna continue our walk through, going through the gate. Now we're starting to go up an incline. It's gradual, but there is an incline because we got to go from 15 feet down to, you know, to street level. This is really nice. So from where I'm at, you can see the elevation difference. It's down below where I was. Going to the left, that way is the lowest part. This is why it's got the name Sunken Gardens. Got Amazon parrots. Ooh, big yawn. Ooh, big yawn. Big yawn. Oh, look at that. Oh, man, yeah. Oh, man, look at that. Ooh, big yawn. Hi, pretty birdie. How are you? Hi. Oh, it's like you're tired, huh? Yeah. That's a pretty bird. Hi, the pretty bird. How you doing? Hi. All right, 20 is the butterfly garden. So I do occasionally see butterflies around my house. Oh, you do got some flowers blooming. Spring is just around the corner. But again, if you really want to see all of the blooms, especially the orchids that they've got, uh, spring is the best time to come. But since I most likely won't be around this area in springtime, I wanted to come here before it got way too busy. All right, 21 is North Lawn. It's also artificial. So you not got to worry about watering it and cutting it. But all different flowers and plants. Look at that. Like the trellis. Just all growing.
Again, this is more old habitat where they used to keep the smaller animals. I remember back in the 80s, used to have like goats. Yep. Yeah, I think this was the the petting area. Old remnants of the past. So that's that they still have some animals, just the exotic animals. They no longer have. Kind of variegated chalice vine that's on here. Very nice. <coughs> like the fountain. I like that they have the bananas. Me too. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Ooh, I like the pink one. Purple. You can tell what it's used. Yeah, maybe. Probably like that one under the tree here. You put the archway and then more eyelashes. This is really nice. Alright, 22 is Tacitus and Succulent Garden. Giant one here. Well, as you would find in the southwestern portion of the United States, New Mexico, Arizona. The coast aloe. You see, I have these growing all in the front of my yard, and I had to remove them because they were just becoming so invasive, just growing and crowding out all my other plants. Twenty-three is Palm Garden because you get all of the palm trees all around. I mean, it's just clustered. Lots of different shade. And the only other two places in the state of Florida that I've seen all of these different types of palm trees and plant life was the Hemingway House down in the Florida Keys and Flamingo Gardens down near Miami. Got some other nice plants. Got the huge live oak. A 
like how this palm tree has all of these growing on it all these vines just growing on it again there's lots of tables to sit enjoy a lunch All right, last up 24 is the gift shop in the main entrance area. Right, so after you enjoy the gardens, do you do have a nice gift shop? All sorts of stuff to look at and enjoy. You got all sorts of different little knickknacks. Do you do have some some clothing? You got drinks. Again, you could purchase fish food here to feed the fish if you choose to do so. Did you have some sort of hats? But these types of hats are not my uh, forte, so I'm not getting a hat. So, really, really nice. So, Wild looks massively different from what I remember coming here as a child. This is actually the same building that had the world's largest gift shop. And had the all the stonework in the front with the waterfalls before you come inside. This has been redesigned. Now they have a smaller gift shop. They also have a great explorations children's museum inside. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for my visit to Sunken Gardens in St. Petersburg, Florida. Had a phenomenal time. Enjoyed every minute of it. All of the lush gardens, all the different plant life. Like I said, there's signs here on all the different plants, lots of different types of trees, multiple different types of palm trees, some more known in the state of Florida, others not so known, just other cool trees, like that one with the colored rainbow bark, that was pretty interesting. They do still have some of the animals here, which I very, very much enjoy. The laughing kookaburra and the flamingos were absolutely my favorite. Those are my two favorite types of birds. So leave some comments down below what your favorite part of my visit to Sunken Gardens was. I go to places like this, theme parks, zoos, aquariums, other roadside attractions all over the country. So if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I'm almost at 7,000 at the time of this recording. Thank you to everybody who has subscribed. If you're not already subscribed and you enjoy stuff like this, or the other things that I mentioned, join my channel. I have hundreds of different videos from my adventures all across the United States. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!